section one of chapter two. I love new beginnings. Here we go with chapter two. Uh, chapter two is on equations, formulas, and problem solving. And I have to tell you, this is a hard section to teach, not because I don't know it, but because I know it and it's hard to put into words and explain all the different scenarios. So we're going to talk it through and do some, some samples and, uh, and then I'll help you out in class. All right, here we go. Uh, equation. An equation is simply a mathematical statement with an equal sign. So an equation says that two things are equal. It says that they're balanced. Um, you can know if a solution to an equation is true simply by putting that answer back into your equation and, and checking it to see if it's true. So if we have an equation that says 5n minus 8 equals 3n plus 4, and you solve this puppy and you find out n equals 6. Well, you can go back. You can always know if your answer is true, if you, if you got the right answer, by putting your answer back in. So let's put 6n in for n and see if we've got the true answer. So 5 times n we said is 6 minus 8 equals 3 n we said is 6 plus 4. Remember to do multiplication first. So 5 times 6 is 30 minus 8 equals 3 times 6 is 18 plus 4. So 30 minus 8 is 22. And 18 plus 4, 18, 19, 20, 20 is 22. Yay! So yes, 22 equals 22. So n equals 6 is the true answer. All right? So let's try, let's try this one. I want you to try it. Put it in and then come back. So pause me for a minute and do n squared plus 8 equals 3n minus 1. We worked it out and found out n equals 2. Pause it and you work it and then come back. Now I hope you paused it. Here we go. So you're going to put in n is 2. 2 squared plus 8 equals 3 times 2 minus 1. Does your paper look like this? I hope so. n squared is 4 plus 8 equals 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1. We've done the multiplication. Now add 8 plus 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 equals 6 minus 1 is 5. And that is not a true statement. Therefore, we happen to know that we did not get the right answer. So you can always know if your answer is true if you take the time to check it. All right. The next part of this lesson and the whole rest of the lesson is talking about formulas. All right. Formulas are uh, an equation that describes a mathematical relationship. So what a formula does is it takes generalities and puts them into a mathematical statement that is always true. Um, and um, several of those are going to have to do with, uh, a lot of them have to do with geometrical shapes and the parts of those. So here's some more uh, definitions that you will want in your notes. The perimeter of a shape, if you'll remember, perimeter has the word rim in it. The perimeter is the distance around a shape. So if we're adding up all the edges, that's the perimeter. So like the perimeter for a, for a rectangle equals two length, two times the length plus two times the width. So that would be the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. The area of a shape is the squares that it takes to fill up a shape. So if we're finding the area of something, we're going to want the length times the width and we multiply them. So the area equals length times width. So that is a formula for the area of a rectangle. All right. So the squares that it takes to fill up the shape. So you take this many times that many and that's the same as counting all those little squares. The volume is if I have a box sitting here and I want to fill it up with, uh, with lots and lots of little squares, little dice. Uh, so the volume is the cubic units it takes to fill up a space. And so that's going to be, the volume is going to be the length times the width times the height. And I would love to draw you a picture, but I can't draw 3D real well, so I'm not going to try. All right. So if you imagine a box and you have to take the length times the width times the height. So you take all three dimensions and multiply them and that will give you how many little squares you dropped into that box. And these are all having to do with just rectangles. So if you will look, I believe on page 95, 
I could read off or write down all of these formulas for you, but they've already done that in your book. So in your book, um, on page, um, you know what is it? It is page 95. Oh good, I was right. On page 95, there's pictures and there's uh, formulas. You need to look at those. You will for sure want to be familiar with the ones that, the, the obvious ones, the ones for rectangles. You might want to know triangles as well. Uh, some of those other more abstract shapes. Um, you, you may or may not, you might want to at least look at them and find out, well, where did they come up with this formula? And if you can't figure it out, ask me in class, all right? Because you will want to know that hint, hint, hint. You're going to want to know some of these formulas. Um, some other formulas have to do with circles. Circles, you, if, uh, if you're looking at circles and the formulas for circles, you'll need to know these definitions. The circumference, you'll remember, is the distance around a circle. So the circumference is like the perimeter of a circle. We could just call it circumference because perimeter has to do with shape, uh, straight sides. So circumference is the distance around. The radius, remember, is from the center from the center out so it's halfway across the circle the diameter is the distance all the way across the circle so you'll want these two definitions in your notes unless you just already have them memorized and you know them for sure and certain all right okay so once you have all these definitions you've got them in your brain you know all these formulas you've got them in your brain now you can use them in all sorts of different uh, problems which is the last part of our um, of our session of our section and that is problem solving you knew it was going to come um, when you're problem solving you need to know those formulas and once you know those formulas you can use them to find those perimeters or the area or the volume of the different shapes so let's do a couple I'm going to start right off the bat with one that's a little more difficult just to give you a little bit of a challenge here. So this is find the area of this shape. And if you'll notice, sometimes when you're finding area, it's not just an easy cut and dried, well, I know the area of a rectangle is length times width. Well, this isn't a rectangle. This is like a rectangle with a something on top of it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look to see what is this shape. And if I cut it up, can I cut it into shapes that I do know? So I know I want to find the area. So my area equals, what we're going to do is we're going to write out a formula. And that's part of this is not just give me an answer. You've got to write out the formula that you got this answer from. That's part of the answer, okay? Give me a formula and where you got it. So find the area of this shape. So we've got a rectangle. So I want the area of a, of a rectangle is length times width. So I need, whoop, not equals. So I've got length times width. And to that, to this rectangle, do, 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 I'm going to add this half circle. So I'm going to add half of a circle. And if you look back at page 95, uh, if you don't already know, the area of a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And I always remember that by saying, pi are not squared, pi are round. So pi r squared gives you the area of a circle. So we want half of pi r squared. All right, so now we have our formula. All we have to do is plug in the numbers, right? So our length times width is the length times the width of this rectangle. Well, that's easy. They're already right here. So we want 36 times 14 plus, well, one half is just one half. And usually I'll tell you, do you want pi to be, um, to be a fraction or a decimal? Usually we're just going to use 3.14. So we're going to use 3.14 for pi and now we've got to figure out the radius of this of this circle so the radius remember is just halfway across so if we look to see well from here to here is 12 from here to here is 12. if all the way across here is 36 that means all the way across here is 36. so if this is 12 and this is 12 i need another 12 to equal 36. and if this is 12 from here to here the radius is only half of that. So six is my radius. 
All right, and if you didn't catch all of that, back it up and look at it again and see where I got that. So six is my radius. So now it's just a matter of multiplying. You can use your calculator, and I actually didn't use my calculator, but I don't want to do it all again. Um, so I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to show you what I got. So when I took 36 times 14, I got 84. And what I actually did here, so you're going to take the 1 half times 3.14, 6 squared is 36. And I actually took half of 36 and then multiplied it by 14. Remember, because we can do commutative, commutative property. So we've got the 84 plus when you take the uh, half of 36 uh, and then multiply by 3.14, you're going to end up with, oh my goodness, a mess. Where did it go? Do, 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 uh, 56.52. And guess what? I lied to you because 84 is when I, I multiplied it and I took, that's just the 14 times 6. Ha, ha, ha. So then when I took the, when I multiplied the whole thing and added it, I got 504. See, I told you I didn't do it in, on a calculator. All right, so then when you add both of those things up, you get 560.52. And that is the area. And so did I tell you what it's in? Oh, I didn't. So let's just say these were, I don't know, are they inches? Let's say they were inches. If they're inches, then we've got inches squared. Remember, if it's area, your, um, your, uh, your unit of measure is going to be squared because we're measuring in little squares. If it's length, if it's perimeter, it's just going to be straight inches or feet or yards. If it's, um, if it's volume, remember it's going to be cubic with a little three because you've got three dimensions. So don't forget that part of your answer. That is part of it. All right. What's the next one? The next one is, oh, oh, oh. So sometimes you take different shapes and you add them together. Sometimes you take different shapes and you've got to subtract some things off. So let's look at this problem. On this problem, I've got a, uh, a front of a house that I'm siding, and I'm just doing a, the part of a gable. And um, so I've got just that triangle part at the top of the gable that I want to put siding on. But I've also got a um, I've also got a window, and so obviously you don't want to put siding on top of the window. So we're going to take we're going to need a formula. So we, again, we want area because we're covering it, the siding, how much siding is, is measured in square feet. So we want area. So we want the area of a triangle. So here again, you need to know the formula for the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. And once you get the area of that triangle, in this case, you want to take out the area of the rectangle. So minus the length times the width. All right, so now you just plug in the numbers that you know. So area equals one half times your base is 12.5 times your height is eight minus the length is uh, of the window. Oh, oh, here it is. The window is 2.8 by 4.8. Uh-oh, times 4.8. I have to move this over further. Oh, I hope that's still in. All right. So when you whipped out your handy dandy calculator, so one half of eight is four, and four times 12.5 is 50, minus 12.8 times 4.8 is 13.44. And then when you subtract 50 minus 13.44, you should end up with 36.56. And these are in feet. So my answer, because it's area, is feet squared. All right. So some of these are going to be area. If you look uh, in your book, there's some other formulas also on page 98. You'll find other formulas. And uh, these are formulas that don't have to do with shapes. They have to do with, um, with speed or with um, velocity or these types of things in other scenarios. And I didn't have enough whiteboard to write it all out, so we're just going to have to read the last one I want to do. I wanted to work with example number five. says, a truck driver begins a delivery at 9 a.m. and travels 150 miles before taking a 30-minute break. 
He then travels another 128 miles, arriving at his destination at 2 p.m. What was his average driving rate? So because this is a distance formula, you've got distance equals rate times time is your formula. But we happen to know the distance and the time, and they're asking for the rate. So we can simply solve for rate ahead of time and say, well, if I divide by time, that's going to get up, uh, end up with just the rate. So what I'm going to do is I want to take the rate equals the distance divided by time. So I need to find out, well, what distance did he drive? If you remember, he drove 150 miles. Well, then he took a break, but then he drove some more. He drove 100, another 128 miles. So he drove 150 plus 128 miles. And we're going to divide by the amount of time that he drove. And if you'll look, he started driving at 9 a.m. And then he stopped at 2 p.m. And I don't know how you count time, but I have to count it. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 is 5 hours. But then remember it said that he took a 30-minute break. So he, he was on the road for 5 hours, but half an hour of that was a break. So he actually drove for four and a half hours. So now we just have a simple problem to work out. The 150 plus 128, oh, I'm going to try to do it in my head. 278 divided by 4.5. Break out your handy dandy little calculator or your notes if you did it already. So it should be 61.8. And the label on that is going to be miles per hour because it is a rate. All right. Uh, here again, I could we could just do problems over and over and over again, but then the problem that you get is going to be different than what I show you. So the point is to read the problem and then try to try to discover in your mind <laughs> what exactly is it that we're trying to solve. And then look at your list of formulas and find, oh, well, we've got a formula that has those parts and pieces in it. Just plug in the numbers that you have into that formula, and there you've got your solution. All right? Go for it. See you soon.